Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss business process management, BPM, which is a management methodology that involves the design, implementation, execution, and monitoring of business processes. Simply put, BPM orchestrate the function of a business from the design to implementation to execution to monitoring. What is the purpose of it? Why do we have this? Well, we want to improve efficiency. And what is efficiency? Efficiency is streamlining the process to reduce waste, to reduce cost, decrease cycle time, how long it takes us to perform a certain task, to produce a product, to produce a service, to deliver a service, eliminate any unnecessary or costly activities, and as a result, deliver faster, faster product or service. Also, another, another goal of this is increase agility. Now, what is agility? What is that word? Well, simply put, improving the ability to respond quickly to changes in the market. So if the, cha if the market changes, if customers have a new need, we have to meet that need. If the, if the, the customer taste changes, we have to change quickly. Whether those customers are internal or external, then how do we do that? How do we do that? Again, reducing, not again, but reducing bureaucracy, empowering employees. Employees are on the front line. Let them do make the decision. Implementing processes that are flexible and adaptable, that they can change so we can respond to changes in the market quickly. And the third goal of this business process management is to enhance customer satisfaction. And that's the most important. And the reason is simple, because this is where we generate revenues, basically improving the customer experience by providing high quality product and services and responding quickly to customers inquiries or concern and most importantly anticipating that's the most important thing you want to anticipate customers request customer demand and meet that demand before your competitors before we proceed any further i have a public announcement about my company farhatlectures.com Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Now in BPM, we have activities in the business process management, and I'm gonna list the following activities, which are process discovery, process analysis, process design, process modeling, process implementation, process monitoring, and process optimization. Now in your textbook, in your CPA review course, they might have five or four or six. I believe those steps are a little bit more comprehensive, which is fine. The key is to understand the big picture. If you know anything about Farhat, once I have a series of steps, I'm gonna go through each step separately, explain it and give an example so you understand what does it mean in the context of the big picture. Starting with process discovery. And the wording of each step in this process or each activity is it describe itself. What is discovery? Learning. The activity involves identifying and documenting the current business processes. It includes activities such as process mapping, mapping the process, process mining, looking for stuff, and it could include process analysis, but this will be, I'm gonna co cover this in a separate step, process analysis. So this step, which is the first step, provide a, a foundation for understanding. Remember, in this process, we are learning how work is currently being performed, and maybe we could figure out some inefficiencies or bottleneck. Bottleneck means issues that not, that's not allowing us to be functioning at an optimized, in an optimized fashion. So process discovery is important because it's gonna provide a baseline for process improvement initiative because once we know where we are, then we can move forward. And some examples in this step will be interviewing employees to understand their current workflow, mapping out the steps of a current process, on a whiteboard or on, on a software or or mapping the whole process to understand the big picture. In this step, we might analyze data from existing system to understand how the process is currently executed. So think of this as a learning, learning step. Once we learn, we might want to process this information a little bit further. 
This involves analyzing. Now, after we learn, we kind of know what's going on, we have the picture. Now we analyze the current business processes to now to identify a little bit more what's going on in the efficient inefficiencies, bottlenecks, and area for improvement. Now we're analyzing this process. Now, we could have what's called root cause analysis, which is a systematic method for identifying and underlying causes of problem within a process. Now, after we learn, now what we do is we do what? We underline, we underlining and identifying the causes. Now we are looking for the exact cause. What's happening here? Root cause analysis. This can help us identify the reason why the process is inefficient and ineffective. We learn about it, now we need to do, to do more. Now here we measure the cycle time or the lead time of a process to identify bottlenecks. We're a little bit more specific. Conducting the root cause to understand the underlying causes. Surveying employees to understand the main points. Now we're not asking them how the process work, we're trying to figure out more information from it. The third step is process design. Here what we're doing, we're gonna create, now we learn about the process, we did some analysis, now we're gonna create, try to create a new system. This involved the, cre the creation of a new and the key improved process based on the result of the process analysis. This would include defining the new process, process, identifying the roles and responsibilities of those involved, and mapping out the flow of activities required to complete the process. Now we're kind of designing the new process. This, this involved designing, creating a new process flow diagram that reduced the number of steps maybe. Sometimes you might increase the steps, but usually you want to be more efficient. You want to reduce the step to complete a to the steps required to complete a task redefining the roles and responsibilities. Some people may not be happy about this, and or some people could be very happy, and designing a new process that automate a manual task to improve efficiencies. Now we, we're designing, we're basically drawing the new map for the business process. Now, once we do that, we're gonna model it. This involves creating a visual representation of the new process, which can be used what for? because we want to communicate this process. When we're, do, when we're working with the business process, we wanna communicate this process, maybe to higher management, executives, stakeholders, and to identify potential issues. Because sometimes once you put something on a paper, you might see problems in it. Here to improve understanding. So you, you, you do process modeling to in, improve your understanding, provide the visual representation, can help stakeholders understand the flow of activities, decision points, and handoffs point between different roles and department. This is also help with communication. Why? Because you wanna communicate this to stakeholders. The stakeholders could be employees themselves using the system, could be customers, could be vendors, could be high, high level executives. It could also be used as process modeling to train new employees on how to ex execute the process. So specifically, the step will involve creating flowcharts to visualize the steps using what's called business process modeling annotation. We'll have a quick recording about this concept, BPMN, tool to create a visual representation of the process, develop a simulation of a process, basically pilot, piloting the process to understand the impact of changes on process performance. Then we're gonna implement process implementation. This involves and deploying the new process or making any necessary changes. Sometimes we have a new process, sometimes we're gonna take the existing one and tweak it a little bit. The goal of this step, which is process implementation, is to make sure the new step is executed as intended. Because, okay, you studied the old process, you analyze it, you design a new process, you design it, you put it on a map, you, you model it, now you want to implement it to see if it's working as expected expected outcome are achieved. Here you'll do what's called pilot testing in this step. The new, the new step should be piloted in a, preferably in a control environment if that's, if, that's, if that's feasible. Control means not life environment to ensure that it operates as intended. Sometimes you have to do it in a life environment. This involves a small scale test with a limited number of employees or a more extensive test with a larger group. The best example of pilot testing now that's going on is Google. Google is launching this artificial intelligence, which is called BARD in response to Microsoft. And what they're doing, they're allowing the employees, limit all the employees at Google to test this artificial intelligence versus OpenAI that's basically partially owned by, by, a, uh, by Microsoft. Updating an existing system to support the, the new uh, process flowchart. This is when you 
implementation steps or rolling a new software tool to automate a process this is again part of the implementation or developing a new training material to teach employees how to execute the new process so those are actual examples of process implementation then we have to do what we call process monitoring to see if everything's working as expected tracking the performance of the new process to ensure it's meeting what we design it to do, the desired goals and objective. Here we can track key performance indicators, KPIs, which we'll talk about those later. For example, if we're looking at the cycle time or error rate to understand the process, analyze feedback from customers or employee, what for? To identify areas of improvement, conducting periodic processes audit to ensure that the process is being followed correctly. This is part of the monitoring. Reporting on it, report should be generated on a regular basis to communicate the performance to stakeholders, whoever those stakeholders are. They might include dashboards, chart, other visualization that provide a clear picture of what's happening in that new process of the performance process. And at the end, we want to kind of go back and optimize, make it even better. This involves continuous improvement over time to increase efficiency, reduce costs, and improve overall performance, and as a result, improve customer satisfaction. That's the whole purpose of business process. This will be conducting uh, continuous process management like Kaizen or Lean events to eliminate waste and improvement and improve efficiencies. We'll talk about those later on. Those are management techniques, collect and analyzing data to identify pattern and the trend that could lead to process improvement. Again, you want to keep on improving here. Process optimization means making it better and better and better. Developing and executing a plan that implement a major process change that will deliver significant benefit. Again, do more. Now, bear in mind, we could do process management in a totally different way. So another business management and business process management methodology is something called PDCA, which is plan, do, check, and act. Very similar. It has four stages. It's a framework that is widely used in the business process management and quality management. And it has four stages, plan, do, act, and check. Once again, we have four steps. And what do Farhad do in each step? We're going to go through each step separately, given an example, starting with the plan stage. The plan stage, as it's, you know, the step is plan. We, in this stage, the problem or opportunities for improvement is identified. You're looking for it and plan is developed to address it. This should include clear objective. What are we doing? A timeline and list of resources needed to complete this objective. So identify the problem. Maybe the cycle time for processing customers order is too long. That's the problem. Objective, reduce the cycle time by 50% in the next three months. The timeline, well, an example of it, implement the new process within four weeks and measure performance in the next eight weeks. Resources that we need, we need two full-time employees to work on the project and provide funding for the new software. This is the planning stage. From once we plan, we're going to do the do stage. In this stage, the plan is executed according to the established timeline in step one and with necessary resources. This process is closely monitored to ensure that it's being followed correctly to identify and analyze any issues that arise. Here, the two new employees, they work together to redesign the process and implement the new process flow. Training is provided here to employees involved in the process to ensure they understand how they execute the process. Now we're going to check. We plan, we do, we check. In this stage, the result of the executed plan and the prior step are evaluated against what, would we plan, what did we plan to do. Now here, data is collected, analyzed, and compared to the original plan to determine whether the project was successful. This is what we're checking or not because this is the checking stage. Here we could be reviewing KPIs. We'll talk about KPIs later, basically ratios or steps, whatever we, whatever we plan to do, to determine whether the performance has improved, degraded, or remained constant. Constant Examples, performance is measured daily during the first two weeks of the new process and then weekly for the remaining six weeks. Those are you know specific steps in check stage. Data is collected on the cycle time, error rate, and customer satisfaction. Analysis reveals that cycle time has reduced by has been reduced by 35%. That's great, but the error rate has increased slightly. So, so now that in the check stage, we wanted to reduce the time. Yes, that happened, but the error rate went up. So this is what we do. We're checking to see whether what, what, whether what we plan to do and did is actually working as expected. So analysis reveals not as we thought it will happen. Then after we check, we act again. Based on the result of the check stage, we take taking to adjust the process to improve it. If the results met or exceed the expectation of the original objective, well, then we standardize the process and we'll roll it out across the whole organization. 
if the process did not meet the objectives, means it was not as good, the process is modified and the cycle is repeated. Basically, we'll go back to the drawing map and we do what? Start again. Plan, do, check, and act again. This is how it works. Based on the analysis, the employee modified the new process to address the causes of the increase error and in, in error rate because we find this as a problem. We need to do something. Training materials are updated to reflect the changes of the process. Performance is monitored for another eight weeks to ensure that the modification has the desired effect. And here the problem is it seems as we reduce the uh, speed, reduce the uh, of the of the order, we are making more mistakes. So we're saying uh, let, let's do something to reduce the errors. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures. That's the way to do it, is to look at multiple choice questions. That's going to help you understand this concept better. And as a result, you'll be able to do better on your CPA exam uh, and your courses or any professional certification. Accounting is a lucrative, is a prestigious career. Take it seriously, invest in yourself. Good luck and stay safe.